Hi there! Welcome to Room 6. I'm Josh. This is a blind react of something I found on the internet. Uh, a little different video than my usual, but there you go. Uh, if you have anything you think I should blind react to, or just react to, hit me up in the comments, okay? In the meantime, notes. Yes, on pretty pink paper. This is 10 musicians who committed serious crimes. The dark side of rock and roll. Starting with uh, Gigi Allen. Allen is definitely one of the more shocking personas in rock music. Um, he got famous for defecating on stage. Defecating is a fancy word for pooping kids. Ah, uh, there's that's commitment to your art. <laughs> Jeez. He was arrested in 1989 though for assault on one of his female fans. Uh, the woman claimed he he tortured and raped her and even cut her and drank her blood. Jesus, Gigi. Stated it was a consensual act. Um, yeah. He only got 16 months in 16 months in prison for that. Wow. Next up is uh, Sid Vicious. We're all familiar with Sid. At the time, uh, punk started taking over the scene in 1978. Sex Pistols bassist Sid Vicious, real name John Simon Ritchie. Yeah, that's not very punk, is it? <laughs> Open Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style. Op, op, op. Woke up in a hotel room to find his girlfriend Nancy Spongen lying dead on the bathroom floor with a stab wound in her abdomen. According to the bassist, two of them got into an argument the night before and stated that he did not stab her. Oh, I'm sorry. Stated he did stab her, but without an intention to kill her. Right. He even claimed he doesn't completely remember the night and that Nancy even fell onto his knife during the quarrel. Said, buddy. Come on. Hope you don't mind, I'm gonna... I'm gonna meander. Chuck Berry, hey! Become... Before becoming one of the most important figures in rock and roll, Berry was arrested for armed robbery in 1944, which earned him a three-year sentence. After being released, he settled down and had a decent life. I'd, I'd say so. Or by the time the 1950s were coming to an end, he had become an acclaimed star. He was arrested for taking a 14-year-old girl and driving her across the state borders. That's a federal and uh, allegedly having sexual relations with her. Yeah, Chuck Berry, Jerry Lee Lewis, just a bunch of statutory rapists. Allegedly! Uh, after a few trials and appeals, he actually served 20 months in prison. That's it, 20 months. Plus three years before he became famous. I just, never meet your heroes, right? Um, huh, changing it up, going international here. Bard Goldvik. Ethan, names on the screen, uh, Faust. He's a Norwegian drummer, went by the nickname of Faust, and if you know your opera, that's, um, that's pretty metal. As a member of black metal band Emperor, one August day, Faust was walking through a park and a man named Magne Andrasson approached him, clearly intoxicated, and started flirting. At one point, Magne offered Faust to go to the woods, to which he agreed on, and then ended up stabbing the man he just met 37 times, and even kicking his head while he was laying down on the ground. The drummer admitted to the crime, but found it strange that he actually killed somebody. That's what happens when you stab someone 37 times. Uh, he stated that he felt no remorse at the time. In 1994, he was sentenced to 14 years, and served 9 years and 4 months. He continued writing and recording music after being released from prison. I mean, on the one hand, that's pretty metal. On the other hand, dude. You dick! Keeping it international. Varg Vikernis, names on screen, uh, known, now known by his new name, Louis Cachet, and uh, he's got a YouTube channel. I'm not going to put the link uh, in my description for this. Full name is Burzum, oh no, sorry, the band is Burzum, and uh, Varg Vikernis could easily be the single reason why your parents were not in favor of you listening to black metal as a kid. Besides being involved in burning at least three churches, holy crap! Varg was responsible for killing mayhem guitarist Oinstein Arseth, known as Euronymous. I apologize, by the way, for all my pronunciations in this video. Um, 1993, two of them were not in the best of relations, I'd say so. And a Burzum, uh, Varg went over to Euronymous' apartment, stabbed him 23 times, like Caesar, et tu? According to Varg, Euronymous planned killed on planned on killing him first and still to this day claims to have done this in self-defense 
He was sentenced to 21 years in prison, which is a maximum penalty in Norway. At least he got the, the full whack, the, the maximum penalty. Man, musicians. Uh, Lead Belly, some of you may know this. Besides being one of the more important figures of blues music, Huddle William Ledbetter is better known for the crimes he committed. 1915, he was convicted of carrying a gun and was sentenced to work in a chain gang. He managed to escape and found work under a different name. In 1918, he murdered one of his relatives while fighting over a woman and was sentenced to 35 years in prison. There we go. That's what we want to see. Wait for it. His good behavior in prison and a song he wrote to Governor Pat Morris Neff led to him being released after serving the minimum of seven years. Jesus. <laughs> Just put a revolving door on the prisons, I swear. Uh, where am I? Tim Lambesis. Uh, as I Lay Dying, frontman and leader of Austrian Death Machine, Tim Lambesis went through some significant changes in life during his career as a musician. Now, these, this is a more modern, more recent one. In 2012, he told his wife he is no longer interested in being with her and openly revealed that he no longer believes in God and has an extramarital relationship. That's a bit much to drop all at once. It jumped up a notch. It did, didn't it? Next year, he decided to hire someone to kill his spouse, for which he was arrested and sentenced to six years. He was released on parole in late 2016. So, okay. He got six years, released after four, uh, for just hiring someone to kill his spouse. Uh, while serving his sentence, Lambisus, and I, again, I apologize, by the way, for all my pronunciations in this video, he complained that prison doctors had neglected him by denying him anastrozole, a drug he needed for the withdrawal of steroids. Does the term roid rage mean anything to you? This resulted in... Wait for it! Gynecomastia, or enlarged breast tissue. Yes! Make you very popular in prison. Yeah, boy! <sighs> Ian Watkins. Lost Prophets frontman Ian Watkins charged with uh, notorious crimes in late 2012. What was going on with that year? The Mayans were right. Uh, and one year later, he pled guilty. He was not only in possession of child pornography, but also planned on having a sexual intercourse with a one-year-old child. This came as a great shock to both the band members and fans. And the band quickly disbanded. He found, uh, was found guilty and sentenced to 29 years in prison with eligibility for parole after two-thirds of the time served. No! No, you don't, you don't get to come back out after that. He is currently serving his sentence in HM Prison Wakefield in West Yorkshire, England. Oh boy. We got a couple more left here. I, I didn't know it was, we were going to be going down th this dark of a path. And, wow. Vince Neil. Hey. The lead singer of Motley Crue is known for his wild behavior, a bit of a dick from what I hear, allegedly. But the worst thing that he did was when Hanoi Rocks members came to visit him at his home. I've heard of this. As the party heated up, Neil and Hanoi Rocks drummer Nicholas Razzle Dingley decided to go to the liquor store. As you do. While Neil was driving, he lost control of his vehicle and hit the oncoming car, which had two people in it, who suffered serious injuries and brain damage in the collision. Ooh! <laughs> Razzle, who was in the vehicle with Neil, was killed and the singer was charged with vehicular manslaughter and DUI. The level of alcohol in his blood was 0.17, which is far above the limit in California. Neil was sentenced to 30 days in jail, of which he served 15, 200 hours of community service, and $2.6 million in reparation to the victims of this crash. His other crimes include punching producer Michael Schumann, assaulting a sex worker at Moonlight Bunny Ranch, Assaulting a sound man on Motley Crue show and various others. Needless to say, Neil's got problems. Damn. From... From child pornography to... Vehicle manslaughter. Wow. Moving on. Last one. Dave Holland. Longtime Judas Priest drummer. Yeah! Recorded six studio albums with the band between 1980 and 1988. Was found guilty of attempt... Here we go. He was found guilty of attempting rape of a 17-year-old boy with learning disabilities who took drum lessons from him. In 2004, he was sentenced to eight years in prison. Eight. Again, attempt. Holland claimed his innocence throughout his sentence. Guys, that, that went directions I didn't know it was going to go, but I hope that you, I won't ask if you enjoyed it, but I hope you found it interesting, and at the very least, learn something about your musical idols.
Um, meantime, if you have anything like uh, you want me to, you know, react to or review, you want to be on the channel, hit me up. It's in the description. You want to support the channel? I got this merch. I got other new merch. Um, more designs are coming. Patreon, all that jazz. It it will really help out the local scene here in Vegas, but also anybody else that's on the show. I, I do, uh, you know, <clears throat> outside of Vegas interviews as well. Uh, but also, if you want to see more videos like this, click up here. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, would really appreciate it. It would really mean a lot. Click down here. My birthday is July 12th. Currently, it is June 29th. Um, I know I'm not going to hit a thousand subscribers by then, but I'd like to try. Remember to be amazing. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Room Six. I. Jeez, I, 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 I got nothing.